Study Abroad 101, what do you need to know? Welcome back. Today I will be talking to you about studying abroad, the ins and outs, the advantages and everything like that. And I'm coming towards the end of my study abroad year. I've got I think about seven weeks left, which is pretty crazy, but I've written everything down. I thought I'd go through it all with you. So a little background about myself. I am in Nantes, France at the moment and I have been studying here since August. I go to Audencia Business School. I am doing my study abroad in my second year. I go to Greenwich University back home and I am going back in September for my third year. My personal course you could do for a year but I know some people can do for a term and there is lots of different options available so please check out your university to see what options are available to so you. So grab a cup of tea or if you're a coffee girl grab a cup of coffee and this is going to be a bit of a long one so I hope you enjoy. The first thing I have learned studying abroad is independent. You have to be a little bit independent to even embark on the study abroad journey in my opinion because there is so much you have to do during the process that just you need to be a little bit independent to do but you do grow a lot as a person and you gain so much independence from moving to a different country you are fully on your own well at least i personally was i moved into a flat by myself so there's no one else here but you can move in with roommates and I have been solely by myself so yes my parents did help me out with finding a place to stay and moving but that was just the cheapest option for me you're going to be alone for a lot of this process and obviously you're going to have people visit or you might be with flatmates but it's all a new environment it's all completely new and you're going to grow so much as a person during this process. I think you truly learn a lot about yourself and you find out sort of what you like because I don't know about you guys but I found before that I was a very go with the flow person and I still am but I find that I have found things that I genuinely enjoy that I do for me rather than I do because the people around me are doing it. There's a lot of things that you do because it's part of a routine, it's part of your comfort zone. So you are constantly doing that and it's a part of what you do. But I have found that some of those things I actually don't enjoy as much as I thought I did before. And that's truly just because I have completely come out of my comfort zone. Like I've completely disrupted my plans and my routine and I have sort of rebuilt it in a way. It's a new place, it's a new city, it's a new routine. It's a completely new process and I have found that there are certain things that just haven't fit into my routine and I genuinely don't enjoy. I very much enjoyed that process. I also do wanna add that if your routine does change or you do find there are things that aren't making you happy or genuinely didn't make you happy to begin with and vice versa, you might find things that truly make you happy and you wanna fulfill. That's not a bad thing to say, oh, I've realized that for the past two years I've been doing X and it wasn't something for me. Don't be disheartened or annoyed by that. I say that everything's a learning curve. So I think even if you found something that you love or hate, it's a good thing. And you find out so many things here and in this experience and that's absolutely not a bad thing. There is gonna be ups and there is gonna be downs and that's okay. And don't get me wrong, I have had an, ex an amazing experience and I wouldn't change it for the world but there have been ups and downs along the way. Social media, and even I do it on like Instagram or like when I talk about it, I show everyone the good parts and I show you the good parts, but no one really backtracks and shows you the sort of harder parts or the more disadvantages of it. And it's something that I think definitely needs to be addressed. You know, it's amazing meeting new people, integrating into a new culture, new language. And traveling is a big part, especially in Europe. It doesn't take away that there are some rough times. Feeling blue, feeling homesick, and a little bit alone are things that you most probably will feel during this process. There is not one person who I have personally met on exchange who hasn't felt these things, and that's okay. You know, and I think so many people are so focused on oh i'm gonna find my best friends for life that doesn't have to be the case 
you've met some incredible people and you've made some incredible memories with them does not mean they're gonna be in your life for the foreseeable future. You don't have to find the best friend that you've ever had. Like, that's not the point of studying abroad. You need to be a little bit selfish when you think about things like this as well, because the whole point of you studying abroad is that you wanna learn and grow as a person. And that is only for you not for anyone else so you know what you might find an incredible best friend who you're gonna be a bridesmaid at her wedding <laughs> but that is an added plus and it isn't something that is guaranteed another thing i wanted to touch upon is traveling so i was quite lucky to be in france in the concept of europe is really easy to go around by train but I did want to just point out that I personally haven't gone outside of France. I've been to quite a few places in France, but I haven't been outside of France. And I just wanted to be realistic with you guys. You know, some people I've seen who have done travel abroad programs have been to like eight, 10 different countries. And you know what? Some people can afford to do that and some people can't. And if you're an English student and you're on student finance, a point I did want to make is that the student loans actually decrease if you're coming outside of London. So if you are a London-based student, your student loan does go down. You do get a grant from the university, but it doesn't equivalent from my experience to the student loan. A lot of people who are with you may not have the funds to go to Spain, Belgium, Stockholm, I don't know. So that is another thing that I want you to be a little bit more realistic about is if you wanna go, you're gonna have to save up and you might find that you may not have anyone to go with. So you might have to do some solo traveling. It's still going to be an expense. You do not get money from grants or the university grants or student finance to travel. So if you wanna do that on your year abroad or your semester abroad, make sure you have savings to do that because they're giving you that money through Erasmus or Turing to live, not to travel. I have seen a lot of videos, everyone's like, oh, I'm so lucky I traveled here, I traveled there. And like, don't get me wrong, I have been some beautiful places in France. I've been so lucky to go. We decided as a group that not all of us were financially able to go. And I personally don't find it appealing to just go to a country by myself for a couple days, especially with the workload, which is what my next point is. Education system in every country is probably slightly different. And in my experience, very different. I have a whole list here. For my degree, my grades and my attendance count. So this is for Greenwich and for Odensia. So obviously grades count at the university you're going to because you're studying that. But some courses you for back home, you just need to pass. And I know a lot of people who are in the same boat, you just have to pass. However, the grading system between the UK and France is very different. Getting a higher grade here is a lot more challenging than it is back home. And they mark things out of 20, whereas we do it percentage and then, you know, first F21, 22, all of that jazz. So the conversions are very strange. And that is something that you really need to consider. And now I have for my university, and I know this is actually not that common in universities in Nantes and France, but at the university I'm at, attendance is everything. You are only now allowed maybe two or three absences in one module, or they start taking points off your grades. When I had some friends missing weekdays to go traveling, we couldn't do that because we can't miss classes and our schedules changed every week. 
So one thing, and I don't know again if this is France or just my personal university, but our schedule was different every single week and it was not finalized until the Sunday and sometimes not even the Sunday before. So it was a constantly changing timetable. Things got changed, they got shifted, they moved. It was very stressful <laughs> and it still kind of is. You get a little bit used to it. Leaning on to the education side of things, the teaching is very different. I have found that the French teaching style is very different from the UK at this particular university. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing, it's just something you need to adjust to. And I think it's always a good thing to learn from a different perspective and gain knowledge from a different market, industry, like marketing, for example, I've learned so much about marketing this term, which I didn't know before. And it's opened a lot of avenues for me but it is something that you need to adjust to and it is quite a big shock to begin with the contrast between the UK and here like back home I'm everyone on my degree is doing I think five modules this year I'm doing 16 which is crazy <laughs> in comparison and so it's a lot of hours a lot of education and you know what, it's a big shock and a big contrast, but I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. I think it's actually made me become a lot more organized and really focused on what the key important things are, really valuing my education, as well as the time that I have with friends, going out, all of this. I've really found a good balance of uni and social life. I also just wanted to mention on the whole education front, I am actually doing a master's course at this university. So people are older than me, they have a lot more experience and they know a lot more. That scared me so much, but I've gotten used to it and I've actually learned so much from the people around me. And I found that, you know, I'm not dumb and I'm not young and I can bring many different aspects to a group project. For example, is add a different aspect. You can always see things from a different aspect. So do not let that deter you. I was very shocked. It actually made me very down to begin with. So I was like, what the actual heck? What is all this work? What is all these modules? Like, why am I in uni five days a week? I figured it out and it was very stressful. I went nine. I was in pure stress mode for a couple, couple weeks there. But you know what, you get used to it and I think I have learned a lot from it and I think that when I go back for uni next year, I am going to be smooth sailing. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, a point I wanted to make was also I have done so many group projects and group work stuff this year and I have not done as much group work in my life. So that is something I wanted to note as well. Group work was a shock to me as well as the exams the exams were very different very different <laughs> from the uk and i also haven't done exams in a while because my university is predominantly uh, coursework based but that is something that you just need to be prepared for you need to have your notes and you need to revise but ask the french students and the lecturers if they have any advice for you going into the exams and i think you'll be gone the difference in the culture is something that i think depends on the country i think in the uk we very much press on you need to know what you're doing at 18 you go to uni you get a job boom work 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 whereas in some countries they're a little bit more relax about it they are a little bit older when they go to uni they have more gap years and everything like that so that is something that i just think is very eye-opening how the emphasis on education and working and how much they value sort of the balance between work and leisure i suppose or social aspect is very interesting especially for like lunch, for example, they give you two hours lunch here and it's very French culture to go out for lunch, have a nice lunch, you know, and that is something that's really interesting and I've actually really loved here. 
I think it's really great when you walk around the streets and everyone's outside eating and having a really lovely lunch. It's sort of refreshing to not be so work, work, do your education, go into uni. It's a different way of life and it's also a slower pace. You don't have to know what you want to do, especially I know that's a big thing in the UK. Know what you want to do, go to uni and do it. You don't have to know what you want to do. Before I came here, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no idea what I was doing in life and I was kind of just floating. But I have actually found that doing marketing this term is something that actually really opened avenues that I want to explore. I really, really am enjoying particularly digital marketing and social media aspects. And I do think it's something that I really want to venture into. I think that is something I'm actually very interested in doing, but that is something that I've only found out coming here and learning and doing it here. So, I'm 21 and I have just found out that I maybe might want to go into marketing and that is not a definite and that might change in three months. So please don't feel like you have to know what you want to do. You don't and that's okay. <laughs> now I want to go into sort of something that I think is the key to studying abroad and picking where you want to study abroad and that is research. Research, 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 my friends. So you really need to research the options available to you. And when I mean research, I mean deep dive research. Like find out every bloody thing you can about the university, the students, look at other students there, maybe contact them. Contact students that have already been there from your university, other universities. Make sure you find out everything you need to know about the place you are going before you go there. You are moving to a different country, so you need to know the customs, the culture, the language, the costs. If you need a visa, how you're getting there. I say this because when I chose Mont, it was on a little bit of a whim, I suppose. There were three in France, but now there are two. And as I was applying, I applied for Paris and Nantes because the Lyon option was not available for me. And during the process, they subtracted Paris, which was my first option, and put in Lyon. Now, as they did that, that meant I only had one choice because we had to put in two offers. So I only had Nantes. I didn't research Nantes as much because I was kind of set in my head on Paris and I just put it as the backup option because I knew I wanted to go to France. And I ended up here and didn't have that much research on the safety aspect of here. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Nantes is rated kind of high in France for crime, but I wouldn't say walking around, I feel unsafe, except if you have watched the news recently, I'm sure you would have seen that there are protests in France at the minute. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not saying that I disagree with anything they're doing. I think I do not know enough on the political front to sort of understand French politics and understand really what's going on. But it is very unsettling and you do feel a kind of unsafe with everything that's going on because there is quite a bit of violence, tear gas, smashing up of shops. And it was a very big shock to me. I was not expecting it. And I still have to go to university every single day. I still have to go to class because of the whole attendance thing. And you know, I still have to live here. But you know what, it's just an adjustment and I'm adjusting to it, making sure that I am putting my safety first. It's a little bit scary and it's a big contrast to back home. It's a part of the experience, it's a part of living in a different country. I actually really love the city. It's not too big, it's actually a really great size, you can walk around it, there's loads to do and I'm still finding new things to this day but it's not London size, it's a lot smaller, it's smaller than Paris and I think it's very manageable and I really love so it. So I had seen a couple study abroad videos pop up on my YouTube, my Instagram and I also heard some people talking about it in some talks throughout the year of my first year and I sort of impulsively applied, I was like you know what it sounds great, it's a great experience. I'm gonna be independent, move to a different country. What is there not to love? So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. 
why not? I may not even get in, I'm just gonna apply. And I did. And it was very impulsive of me. And honestly, I didn't think I was gonna get it until I got an email being, congratulations, you got accepted. And I was like, wait, what? So I accepted my offer and I'm here. I won't lie to you, I sort of did some research and saw, hmm, where can I go? Ooh, France, I wanna move to a different country, why not? I was very much in a, I wanna explore the world sort of mode. I wanna go here, I wanna go there, and I wanna learn new things. And I felt a little bit stuck and a little bit unsure of what I wanted to do in life. And I thought it would be a great next step and a great experience for me, and I applied. And honestly, there's not much more to it than that. From my experience, I would definitely recommend it. I've met some great people. I have made some incredible memories. I have learned so much and grown so much as a person. I feel like I'm cliche, but I'm finding myself a bit more and I'm really the direction I wanna go when I move home. Or I wanna get some experience within industries. I wanna move back into London if it's feasible. I'm thinking things I wanna do within the next couple of months. And that is something that I've definitely learned here. It's all loose plans and loose aims but I have them and I have sort of a direction that I feel confident and happy going into and that is something that I don't think I could have done at home. I think you're never gonna have an experience like this unless you do it and it's a big risk, but I think it's completely worth it and I think the risk has paid off and I've had an incredible experience that not everyone has had the opportunity to do. Now let's talk about some of the issues. <laughs> because there's been some. I wanna talk about the visa issues. Yay, Brexit. Getting a visa is very bloody hard. You will struggle like hell getting a visa. I do not know one person who did not have issues from the UK to get a visa to France. It takes so long, it's so expensive, there's so much paperwork, and you need to start applying as soon as you get your acceptance letter into the university. Do not leave it last minute and you don't do what I did. Just go and hope for the best because I had to stay home for two weeks because of all the issues with my visa, because of the Shigen, 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 I don't know how you say it, rules. I had 90 days and 180 day period. I nearly used all them up, so I had to come home for two weeks, then go back and then get my visa at Christmas. Nightmare, absolute nightmare. Apply for your visa as soon as you can and make sure you have the money to apply because it is bloody expensive. I can do maybe a video more in depth on like the visa process and the costs. That is what I'm gonna say on the visa front because as you can tell, I'm still a little bit bitter. The next issue is a flat or accommodation. That is another thing. The other part was the website that the university here recommended us and I think it's recommended a lot throughout Europe and I think it's part of crap. You have to look in advance and a lot of people I know had to actually pay in advance to get an apartment because they only take up to 30 days in advance and so when you go on 30 days before you are coming here there's no flats. I tried to pay for my apartment in May when I was moving in August and they were like mm -mm, no. So I was like oh well I'm moving to France on this date when do I apply? They gave me a date I was like, okay. I was like, so when I come back here, there's gonna be apartments available. There's not gonna be any issues. No, no, no issues. There were issues, there was no apartments. <laughs> I had to scour the web to find them. Airbnbs weren't looking good. And I ended up paying quite a bit more than most of the people here. And it is a one bed, it is big. So obviously none of the costs for like electricity or anything are split. Finding accommodation is very hard. I do not know one exchange student actually who came to my university who didn't have issues. Some people were scammed. Some people came without accommodation. They were staying in hotels. It was a nightmare. If you can, book it in advance and go early or just book in advance and go whenever. Keep on top of accommodations, keep pestering them. Make sure you have all your documentation for applying and this is also where savings come in. I would highly recommend 
as soon as you apply for study abroad, start saving because you're going to need that money in the process. It's not cheap. It's really not cheap to study abroad. And it's not even the living costs. Like the living costs in France, in this particular part of France, obviously Paris is slightly different, is cheaper especially because we have an exchange rate. We are lucky, I suppose, in that sense, as we get to convert things back. So it's more so the process, the visas, the apartments, everything like that. So that's where the research comes in. Make sure you know how much apartments are gonna be, and how much the living costs are and all of that. Because if you do not know those costs, it's gonna be a big shock and it could be quite detrimental to you when you're there especially if you can't get a job because now we're out of the EU, it is quite difficult to get jobs within Europe and also your schedule may not allow for it, like our schedule doesn't allow for it. Add for the cost when you get there, as well as the costs of applying to be there, the visa, getting there, getting there is obviously expensive. I was very lucky in the end, my parents came with me and drove me to Nantes in France so I didn't have to pay for like luggage or flights or anything but I have flown back and forth a few times that's a mouthful to say and that is something you need to take into consideration all of those costs you really need to consider before you go the application process is very long it takes a long time to get everything in order and it's stressful but you keep organized and you get through it it's gonna pay off so it's gonna be go 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 for a couple months during that process but trust me it's worth it so just pre-plan pre-book because that's things that i didn't end up doing and ended up paying a lot of money to go home at christmas for example but keep that all in mind when you are there and going there it's something that is not incorporated into the costs and it's something i like to call hidden costs and there are quite a few of those friends is difficult for some people and it's also always scary and a little bit nerve-wracking but you know there are going to be loads of other exchange students who are on your courses or just at the university who are in the exact same boat as you and you are all there for the same experience it's going to be nerve-wracking and you might feel a little bit alone or stressed at the beginning but you're gonna make friends you're gonna have a great time and you just need to put yourself out there and say yes integrate go to all the events go out with people and really make the most of it and if you want more on studying abroad or more of seeing me then please subscribe and like this video and let me know it down below if you have any recommendations or anything you want to see and i'll see you in the next one bye